से कम तीस हाँ पचास ठीक है हो गया फिर से में ना
अच्छा बोल रही हूँ हेलो हेलो गेस्ट इज़ हियर वी शुड स्टार्ट एट एंड आई डॉक्टर नामिका प्रसाद ओके सांस गुड या हेलो एवरीबडी गुड मॉर्निंग लेट एस स्टार्ट द सेशन वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रॉम माय साइड फ्रॉम एनजीपी पटना थर्टीन टू ऑल द आर प्रिंसिपल सर आर पेट्रन ऑल द प्रिंसिपल्स हु हैव ज्वाइंड द फैकल्टी मेंबर्स हु हैव ज्वाइंड एंड आर डियर स्टूडेंट्स a very good morning from new government polytechnic new government polytechnic is organizing a series of webinar uh, and in this series today's topic is innovation and scientific research without which our world cannot prosper cannot do anything as is rightly said um, need uh, is the uh, start of innovation start of anything research and uh, every day uh, research should go on so let me introduce first our uh, guest dr anamika prasad to the audience hello hello uh, madam dr anamika prasad is uh, very we, we are very lucky to have her and uh, uh, she has taken out her time and she is uh, let us see just see she is from california we are from india और ये सब साइंस का ही सब कुछ है कि हम सभी जुड़ सके हैं और शी इज फ्रॉम आर सिटी बाई लेन ऑफ पटना एंड शी डिड है बी टेक फ्रॉम आई आई टी बी एच यू इन सिविल इंजीनियरिंग देन एम एस एंड पी एच डी फ्रॉम एम आई टी यू एस ए फ्रॉम सिविल इंजीनियरिंग स्विच ओवर टू मटीरियल साइंस जस्ट टू फॉलो हर पैशन हर पैशन फॉर रिसर्च and uh, she did her post doctoral from stanford university all this which uh, she did was very difficult especially for a girl child from a very small city uh, patna but she did it and uh, you students you can also do it if you follow your passion if you follow your love for research if you follow your uh, whatever you want to do in life you can do and she is an example of that all this um, is and uh, now i'll uh, ask our principal sir uh, who is our patron also and he is uh, taking all the pains to organize the webinar so that the students get benefited uh, he'll uh, start the session uh, formally and uh, then we'll switch over to dr namika sir principal sir a uh, good morning everybody Uh, respected Dr. Anika Prasad. Uh, Anika Prasad, as well said by Dr. Anuradha Krishnan, she is a academician, researcher, scientist, and faculty of civil mechanical engineering, South Dakota State University. Uh, now, uh, I, I am uh, I am seeing this. Uh, all the faculty members have joined. so dear faculty members respected uh, dr anuradha krishn faculty members of other institutions and dear students uh, i am very thankful that the series of webinar 
which we planned which the ngp patna tera has planned to deliver during this lean period of study when the students are just preparing after completing their course they are preparing the exam we are giving the tips for their placement so that our student can place with a good package in a reputed company to keep the flagship of new government polytechnic patna tera high as always they did so in this series of webinar i welcome you all as uh, our coordinator of today's session dr uh, anuradha krishn organizing committee dr anupma dr manju kumari and all participants the today's topic is very important as you know the giving presentation is an important part of sharing your work and achievement to recognize in the larger engineering and scientific community presentation is very important the ability to do so effective presentation can contribute to your career success but the pitfall includes overly complicated content monotone delivery and focusing on what you want to say rather than what the audience is interesting interested in hearing jo placement ki baatein hain jo placement ke liye apne scientific jitne kaam kiye hain abhi students project mein bhi our students has taken part and from new government polytechnic patna tera more than 60 scientific projects has been sponsored by bihar council on science and technology un sab project ke liye jo final year students apne project taiyar kiye hain aur jo internship mein aapne project taiyar kiya hai un projecton ko सही तरीके से प्रेजेंट कर करना और साइंटिफिक वर्ल्ड में अपने किए गए प्रोजेक्ट को अपने किए गए टेक्निकल काम को मार्केट में फैलाने के लिए प्रोस्पेक्टिव मैन्युफैक्चरर को अट्रैक्ट करने के लिए आप अपने प्रोडक्ट को किस तरह प्रेजेंट करेंगे ये टिप्स डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद आज देंगे हम बहुत आभारी हैं उनके जो यूएसए में रह के हमारे स्टूडेंट्स को जो बिहार के पॉलिटेक्निक और इंजीनियरिंग के कॉलेज के स्टूडेंट्स हैं उनको अपने इस टिप्स के बारे में विस्तार से बताएंगे और हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि हमारे सभी स्टूडेंट्स उससे लाभान्वित होंगे प्रेजेंटेशन और रिसर्च के जो भी प्रोजेक्ट आप किए हैं जो भी आपने पढ़ाई की है जो आपने प्रोजेक्ट किया है उसके प्रेजेंटेशन के बारे में उस रिसर्च को आगे कैसे ले जाए उसको जर्नल में कैसे प्रकाशित की जाए ताकि दुनिया का ध्यान आपके किए गए काम की तरफ अट्रैक्ट हो इनका तकनीक इनका नॉलेज डॉक्टर अनिका प्रसाद द्वारा आज दी जाएगी हम अपने स्टूडेंट्स को सिर्फ यही कहना चाह रहे हैं कि जो आपका इफेक्टिव प्रेजेंटेशन है चाहे वो नोटबुक में लिखते हैं चाहे वो एग्जाम के कॉपी में लिखते हैं दीज आल्सो आर प्रेजेंटेशन जो आपको अट्रैक्ट करता है एक वाइड रेंज ऑफ ऑडियंस को जो सेमिनार हॉल में एक ऑडियंस हो या जनरल के माध्यम से विश्व के सभी साइंटिस्ट फैकल्टी और साइंटिस्ट जो महकमा है उसके बीच जाए एग्जामिनेशन में जो नोट लिखते हैं वो आपके टीचर के बीच जाता है तो आपके एरिया ऑफ इंटरेस्ट और रिलेटेड फील्ड से जितने काम हैं जो इनोवेटिव कोई आइडिया आपने लाया है कोई स्टार्टअप तैयार किया है तो कोई जो पोटेंशियल फंडर्स है मीडिया है 
वो आपके काम को अपने इंटरेस्ट का कैसे समझे ये भी आपको बनाना है आपके काम को आपके काम के ग्लैमर को आपको प्रकाशित करना है और आप अपने काम को जब तक ग्लैमराइज नहीं करेंगे दुनिया उसे नहीं देखेगी प्रेजेंटेशन में दो बातें होती है कि आप कितना भी बड़ा कंटेंट ले जाएं लेकिन वो जब तक ग्लैमराइज नहीं होगा जब तक टेक्निकली ग्लैमराइज नहीं होगा तब तक पब्लिक उसे ध्यान नहीं देगी ऑल्दो रिसर्च कैन टेक मंथ और इयर्स टू मूव फ्रॉम आइडिया जनरेशन एंड डिजाइन टू डाटा कलेक्शन एनालाइजिंग राइटिंग ऑफ द रिजल्ट बट द मोस्ट प्रजेंटेशन ओरल और विथ पावर पॉइंट एटसेट्रा इट टेक्स हार्डली टेन टू ट्वेंटी मिनट्स सो हाउ डज वन गो अबाउट क्रैमिंग ऑल ऑफ द वर्स हार्ड वर्क in to such a brief time allotment deciding what information to include and how to organize that information can often be more stressful than actually giving the presentation dr anamika will give you the tips jisse ki aap apne presentation ko apne research work ko आगे बढ़ाने में मार्केटिंग करने में आपको लाभ होगा और आप अपने कैरियर को उज्जवल बनाएंगे इंस्टीट्यूशन राज्य एवं दास देश का नाम ऊपर करेंगे इस सेमिनार में जो हमारा वेबिनार है उसमें आपका लास्ट में क्वेश्चन आंसर भी लिया जाएगा टेक्निकल टीम से तो गुजारिश है कि इनका चैट बॉक्स ओपन रखें सो so दैट कि इन बिटवीन कोई इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन आते हों जो डॉक्टर अनामिका को आंसर करने में आसानी हो तो बीच में भी ले सकते हैं अदरवाइज सारे क्वेश्चन का आंसर लास्ट सेशन के लास्ट में किया जाएगा रिकॉर्डिंग भी बच्चों को उपलब्ध करा दी जाएगी सो so बीच में अगर कोई नोट लिखने का आवश्यकता नहीं है आप केवल ध्यान दें अपने स्पीकर पे एक बार फिर मैं अपने स्पीकर डॉक्टर अनामिका जी और सभी फैकल्टी मेंबर एवं स्टूडेंट्स को इस सीरीज में स्वागत करता हूं और इस वेबिनार को सफल बनाने की शुभकामनाएं देता हूं थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर अनुराधा जी ओवर थैंक यू सर सर हैज बीन ऑलवेज वेरी ग्रेट मोटिवेटर और हम लोग को हमेशा मोटिवेट करते रहे हैं स्टूडेंट्स को मोटिवेट करते रहे हैं और आज भी वही किया उन्होंने और अब मैं अपने स्पीकर से डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद से गुजारिश करूंगी कि वो अपना सेशन स्टार्ट करें वेरी वेलकम वॉम वेलकम फ्रॉम आर एन पटना थर्टीन टू आवर स्पीकर एंड नाउ ओवर टू डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद डॉक्टर डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद Uh, thank you dr krishna and thank you dr singh uh, and all the organizing members um, um i will start my presentation so let me try first sharing uh, my slide and then i'll kind of talk just a second so share so um can you see my screen yes yes yeah thank you for uh, having me um i hope uh, i can talk and you know sh by sharing the some of the work that i have done uh, over the careers i will uh, as dr singh has said part uh, you know presenting is an important part of research um and i will show you some examples of my work and in between again i i'll be happy to answer any questions in between if there are, there are some so it um and then as you are entering your questions in the chat box uh, i will be you know i i can answer it towards the end dr so, anamika i'll uh, just intervene uh, yeah. i think you give the presentation and then um, if there are questions that you students will raise hand and then you can answer the questions so that the students get benefited to the full okay 
Yeah, because I might not be able to see all the raised hands, so I will leave it to you to interrupt in, in between my talk if there are yes, questions. Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, again, thank you to the organizing committee, Dr. Krishna, Dr. Singh, and uh, Dr. Anupma, and Dr. Manju Kumari for uh, having me here today. And all the students uh, of uh, Polytechnic, and I see there are 100, more than 120 participants, so it's great to connect with so many uh, of you today. Um, so I've, I, I think uh, there's enough, you know, you have given my introduction, but I wanted to just briefly uh, say uh, why I'm here today. So as uh, Dr. Krishna has also mentioned, uh, my launching pad has been Patna. Uh, I've been born and brought up in Patna and that is my connection. And that's why I'm excited uh, to be here with you. Um, so I was a graduate from St. Joseph's Convent, Patna and Patna Science College. And after that, I, um, I did my civil engineering um, bachelor's degree from IIT Varanasi, which was ITBHU at that time. Uh, and then my higher edu education from MIT and then Stanford, I did my bioengineering. So that's kind of my educational uh, background. And moving on, um, I have served as a faculty in IIT Delhi uh, for almost three years. And uh, that was a great experience over the time. And for you know personal reasons, I had to move back uh, to US. And so right now I'm a faculty at South Dakota State University. So besides teaching and research, uh, improving the STEM ecosystem is another thing that I find personally satisfying. Um, and in this uh, period of uh, you know, slack in education, I have had several other opportunities to connect with uh, students today right now, but I'd also had an opportunity to connect with Patna Women's College. So uh, this has given me an indirect way to connect with students in Patna, which in normal circumstances, uh, we would not have done that. So, you know, it's an indirect blessing of some sort for many of us. Um, so what I will, um, you know, do today is I'll kind of put my thoughts in five different boxes um, just to organize and what our discussion is going on. So first of all, um, we want to talk about research and innovation. So I'll kind of define what those term means. And then um, we'll talk about why that is important. And I will, this is a very brief, I'll not spend a whole lot of time. Uh, I'll show you some examples of what research and innovation could look like. And all these examples are from my work uh, but, you know, and I'll show you, guide you where you can find more information um, that you would be interested in. So I'll talk about tools and techniques, both during the example that I'll be talking about and then outside. Uh, and then um, kind of, I'll show you what I have done in my position as what to the next steps and how we can integrate. So I teach students um, who are in the second year of undergraduate I also teach students who are in the fourth year of their bachelor's degree, and then I teach graduate students and PhD. So I have taught students a different career path. So kind of um, you, I will talk towards the next step on how we bring about students from different career path um, into what their interest is and what we can do as an individual professor or faculty and what an institute can do. And these are just based on my personal experiences. This is no way to tell the institute what to do. Uh, what I have found uh, effective in my uh, work. So, um, and just one briefly, I will, you know, I am from Patna, so I know Hindi very well. And if any student had a question in Hindi, I'll, and if they wanted to talk in Hindi, I would be happy to transfer to Hindi also. So that's not an issue at all. Okay. Um, so moving on. So first of all, um, this is uh, what is innovation or what is research? We hear these terms and I wanted to clarify uh, the difference between the two. Um, so in research, whenever we say research, we are creating new knowledge. So bottom line, you, you know, it can be described in many different ways, systematic research, systematic collection of data and all that. But the bottom line is we are creating new knowledge. That new knowledge could be a technical knowledge. The new research could be market research, right? If you are creating new product, you do market research. 
So anytime you're creating new knowledge, that's research. Innovation is more an applied way. So many times research is a precursor to innovation, right? So when you have created new knowledge, uh, you can apply that new knowledge to a new product or a new idea. So the outcome of an innovation is a solution, something, something better, something better way of doing it or some, some device, any of those, some product. So they're both kind of uh, you know, connected together. So in, innovation has to happen in an environment where research is also being supported. Um, so then the, the other question is, so why, why should you, know, you come to, uh, uh, sometimes in, in my case, some, some of the students come, from an un, come for an undergraduate degree. Um, and in your case, you are coming for a polytechnic degree, learning a new tool. Why is research? Why should I be concerned about research? So think about research, not necessarily, you know, uh, things which are coming off from, you know, you are, you are doing in your institute, it's a very applied work. And that's what the idea of that Polytechnic Institute is. So your work uh, could be developing a new tool. It could be focused towards more towards innovation side for societal impact. You can create things, uh, you know, even in like, while I was a researcher in India, even smaller equipments had to be, you know, had to be bought from somewhere outside India. And, and that, that, you know, we all, you know, within India, we all have the technology to do that for whatever reason that has not expanded. So you don't have to do a higher end research in that sense, but a higher impact research. So the impact depends on the area that you're sitting in. So you can create knowledge for your own personal growth um, for sometimes like in my position, uh, teaching and research are integral part of our responsibility. So it could be from institutional perspective or it could be for self-improvement and institutional development. So there could be many reasons of why we are doing research. And I, I mean, I would go ahead and say that in your, for the, especially for the students uh, sitting over there, your context is definitely, if you do a research, you learn a whole lot of tools in the process. Um, and Dr. Singh had also mentioned about presentation. Uh, about analyzing information, all that you learn in the process of doing research and has importance um, beyond, you know, just only a research path, even in industry, those tools uh, can come in handy. So now I come, so th those are the two, you know, um, uh, things that I, I wanted to talk first. Uh, so the next few minutes, um, I'll go a little bit deeper into what those research and innovation would look like. And the examples I, I, I choose is from my own work. Um, I run my lab uh, at SDSU is called Biomaterials and Biomechanics Lab. So I, I, am do, I did my PhD in material science and I'm a civil engineer. So I bring that materials knowledge from my PhD days and the mechanics, you know, solid mechanics, analyzing structure from my uh, masters and bio, you know, bachelor's days to bring to, uh, to my current research. Uh, so the three themes I work on is bio-inspired design, biological materials, um, nanomechanical characterization. And if these terms do not mean a whole lot at this point, don't worry, I will kind of, uh, um, I'll walk you through some of the examples and things might become clearer to you. So, uh, but, you know, just wanted to kind of put up that Coming from a material science background or a civil engineering background, um, the research examples you would see are not necessarily bridges and you know, the standard materials that you would imagine a material scientist or a, a civil engineering person to, to be doing. So that's where you know, I, I'll kind of relate to how you learn the same tools and techniques and you can apply it to a broad area. So I'll not go into details of, of all of these examples. I'll, I'll show you papers. If you're interested, you can go ahead and read those papers. Um, but I will kind of pick up a few of the points uh, to highlight uh, three areas of, of research. So at SDSU, that's my current institute, I work in mechanical engineering. Uh, and obviously any department does not sit by itself, so we have Within the College of Engineering, we have people working in material science, electrical engineering, data science, and all of that. Um, and that's where my, my lab is. Um, 
So I'll kind of skip it. So if you are interested in more about that, uh, about my lab, the my first and last name dot com is my website, and you can find some of the papers that I'll talk there too. Okay. Um, so the three examples that I've chosen today um, will look into kind of three different areas of research. The first, I I think most of us uh, will be able to relate more. It's a very applied research. And I'll introduce the problem first. Um, this is a project which is supported by NASA. Um, and this method, um, so what we are trying, so this uh, is, is a paper that we have recently submitted. Um, and I'll talk, talk about that. So, but the first thing you see here, um, this, I think I move my, so the first thing you will see that there's a whole lot of people that when you see a paper, it's not just one person, but there's a some, sometimes a bigger group work together. So the first name, Trupti and Scott, those are the graduate students who are working with, with, uh, with us. Paul and David, those are NASA scientists. They're part of the team. Dr. Letcher and myself, um, we are part of the team on the SDSU on the faculty side. Uh, and when you see a paper, each industry has a has a way of writing these names, and I want to highlight that so that you kind of you understand. So most of the time, the student's name comes at the first and the second. So whoever is doing the actual experiments um, would th their name comes at the at the beginning, and whoever has guided that project is a main advisor for that particular project. That's how it works in engineering side. Uh, the name comes at the last. So the students and then others who have played a role, uh, their name comes in between those two. Um, and then you each paper has a one person as a contact. So if, I, if somebody wanted to know more about this paper, they would not be emailing all the people involved, but there's one correspondence author for each paper. And anytime you read a paper and you want more information or something is missing, obviously not small questions, but you can reach out to that corresponding author. So usually that corresponding author, in this case, it's me, uh, would have their email provided in that paper. Any standard journal will have the corresponding author's paper provided. So when you're reading things, I tend to look at who has done the work, where it is coming from, all of that, because research coming from India, coming from Europe, coming from US uh, can be different. And, and you, when you read papers, you have to read it in their context. Um, one other thing I found um, a little, you know, which I did not really like it when I was doing research in India is most of the time when we define a problem, we define the problem in the context of US. And having worked in US, uh, I knew that was, you know, when US defines a problem, it is defined in the context of US because that's important. So it's important not to just follow the trend, but look at your own surrounding area um, of what the problem looks like. And this problem might not be the same that you're reading in, re in, in the review article. It has to be specific to the ge geography of that. And I'll show you one example where what I mean by that to kind of the work that I did in IIT Delhi to kind of highlight that again. So this work, so kind of, I, I spent more time than I thought on this uh, particular slide. Uh, but yeah, tools and techniques. So you have to learn to give proper credit to people involved to build a good team um, and, and give the right credit. Whoever has actually done the work, whoever has written the paper and whoever has advice gets all the credit. And that way you build more, more teams. So now, so now to the research uh, side of it. Um, so the, the, this particular task is very applied. And the reason it's very applied is- Dr. Anamika, may yeah. I uh, intervene? Somebody is raising hand on your previous slide. It was a very good slide. So let us uh, give him uh, or her, or whoever she is, uh, to uh, ask the question. Sure. Who was yeah. raising the hand, please? Can you please ask the question, whoever who was raising the hand on the previous slide? Ayush Kumar, Ayush Kumar, please come on with the question. Ma'am is here, come on with the question. 
Ayush Kumar. Oh, acha, he is being unmuted. Ayush, you are unmuted. You can ask your question. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, we can continue the session. Thank you, thank okay, you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So again, I and I will walk a whole lot faster in and the actual research because each topic by itself can take longer time. And I wanted to give you a flavor rather than go into more whole lot of detail. So for this uh, research, it's applied because the material, we are not developing a material at our campus. The material is developed by NASA and it has been developed going on for a long time. Uh, the dotted area that you see essentially shows how extreme environment that material would perform. So when the rocket engine blasts, um, the liner from which that heat comes off, that liner is under extreme pressure, extreme temperature. So what kind of material would be suitable? So it doesn't necessarily only has to do with the material. It, ha it has to do a lot with the design of that rocket nozzle. Uh, so it's not something brand new. NASA has been working on this material for a long time. And what they have come up or what they have been using for a long time is copper. I'm working on has copper, chromium, and niobium as the three materials. And you know, if you have learned your materials in basic engineering materials, um, you would recognize this periodic table. So here, here you have copper, which has a, a high, great high thermal conductivity. Um, chromium, which is designed, selected for its, um, it, is, uh, it, uh, it has a higher elastic modulus and niobium, which has a higher melting temperature. So together this alloy is what NASA has been using for a long, long time. Uh, and there are many variations of this copper-based alloy which NASA has been using. So what do we do? What do we come in? So this is applied research because now um, the project that we are working on is 3D printed metals. So while this copper-based alloy has been processed through traditional method, um, 3D printing is very different. 3D printing creates localized heating and cooling so the level of atomic diffusion, you know, the physics, the basic physics changes and how these materials are getting uh, formed and how the, how the grain structure is getting formed. So it requires a whole comprehensive level of analysis to understand the structure, the mechanical property of this new alloy. Uh, so that's where we come in. We get these printed metals. And at our end, we analyze the structure and you know, various tools, we analyze the structure and the mechanical behavior. Um, the final shape that is that figure A and B shows what the shape would look like. Um, it has very fine structure in between, which obviously you cannot see on the, from the outside because it has um, the whole jet liquid uh, inside that structure, which cools that copper alloy. So it's a complicated shape and 3D printing can allow that's why I'm interested in transitioning to this new method of uh, manufacturing. So what we get does not look like a nozzle, the, the previous picture that I was showing. It is more as a proof of concept, can we print this thin sheets of copper-based alloy and how what happens if I change the processing condition? So we get many samples of uh, this 3D printed uh, uh, copper alloy, heat treated, as built, and at our end, we do characterization of the chemical structure. Um, we do microstructure analysis using electron microscopy called scanning electron microscopy. And something which you may be more familiar with is tensile testing and hardness testing. So we do whole sorts of tests and then compare this new material, new manufacturing, material is still copper alloy, new manufacturing method to what is done with the traditional way of printing, right? So some example of what kind of tests we do, so because it is, it's very different surface architecture of 3D printing, it's localized heat and cooling, as I said. So that's a very rough surface. We analyze the roughness. Uh, we analyze the test, the tensile test at different temperatures, right? So here is your tensile machine and there's a, a heat outside it, which heats at a different temperature and it, you can run these tests at different temperatures. And something 
newer you you might have done an hardness test where you know the rockwell or the wickers hardness test you create on a surface you create an um indent or a notch and based on the load required to create that notch you can compare material so diamond is harder uh, you know copper will be softer material on that hardness scale there are machines which can do a more a detailed analysis of that hardness so it can as you are indenting creating that notch you can track the load and the displacement as a continuous way so that's called indentation and the more fancy way of saying it is nano indentation and the nano just has comes because of the size of that notch that you are creating so we are creating essentially mic micro size notches so these notches that you see on that yellow sheet are the notches that are created on that copper surface and based on that we can say something about the elastic properties the plastic properties the work done to create those notches and a whole lot of information can be extracted right so so those are the tools in terms of tools and technique we use the standard tools and technique here is a standard material the manufacturing is different so in this research you have to have an understanding of where the structure is being used what kind of temperature conditions are there and then based on that you design the kind of experiments you would do so that your material performs well under those conditions i didn't talk about fracture and fatigue but we will do a high temperature fracture fatigue analysis also for that material so i'll keep moving on and until unless dr krishna stops me um, uh, for any questions um so i i you know. especially you are taking the examples from your research so the students i hope the students are benefiting from this uh, session because it's a practical example she is taking and she is taking pains to uh, understand to make you understand those things so keep on speaking dr anamika it's a very good uh, session yeah so the second one comes uh, uh, from an example closer um, to india so this is an applied medical research um so uh, let me talk about the research and then talk more about that so um as a material scientist we can learn about traditional metals and alloys we can use similar tools to learn about biological tissue and in the in this the top figure is your, is a bone so this a figure a is a bone tissue and that is a bone tissue which is taken from the, your thigh the thigh bone right the long bone which carries the load right so that's the bigger or the macro scale structure right you you if somebody would have ch eaten chicken you get that uh, femur the the bone the thigh bone and then what you see down the line are just kind of giving an idea of how complicated that structure is so if i look focus on an area this which is called the compact bone the main load carrying structure you know again um, i'll not go into a whole lot of details just to but the bottom line for the top figure is that from micro macro scale all the way to nano scale the change in structure is very highly optimized to carry that load and this is very unique for biological materials and this area comes you know there's a whole lot of area of bio inspired design the reason we want to study these materials from purely from engineering point is can we create new engineering materials which are so you know optimally designed for strength stiffness density and all that so that's one area um, uh, of research but we from a medical point we would be interested to study similar things but the outcome we would be interested in maybe a disease what happens if somebody has arthritis what happens if somebody has bone cancer does this structure how does this structure change and the idea in this case is not just to have an understanding but give input to the doctor or whatever they might be interested in so many times doctors and engineers uh, work closely for that reason to kind of use that engineering tool to give you input for a very medical decision which you know by itself you will not be able to make and the bottom i will kind of ignore but you can go through the bottom is for plant structure so as you see in in our human body similarly in plants also you can have that same level of hierarchical organization and the reason i put it out is that newer newer area of research that is growing and even my lab is working on now is 
can we use these plants as an inspiration for design? Because most of, most of the research is on bones and animal tissue. Can we use plants as an inspiration for design? And can we use these plant materials for structural design? Because those are uh, natural materials. It will not create the same problem that petroleum-based products are creating right now in, in nature. So, but I will kind of not talk about it. Just focus on the bone tissue for now. Um, so we looked at this bone tissue, and this is the work uh, which I, you know, the team, my team started at IIT Delhi. So the first name is now Dr. Sakshi Chauhan. She was my PhD student, and now she's a faculty in some in, in a good college in UP, GB Pant College in UP. Manoj Kumar, uh, he was a master's student at Ames Delhi. Dr. Rastogi and Dr. Shah Alam Khan, I'd worked primarily with Dr. Shah Alam Khan. He's an orthopedic surgeon at Ames and then myself. So you see again, the students, the, those two, Dr. Sakshi Chauhan and Manoj Kumar, they were students. Dr. Rastogi and Shah Alam Khan are AIMS faculty without which this project would not have started. They, I mean, we are getting samples, we are getting everything from them. And then myself, you know, essentially leading the team. And this is where I say, you know, you have to define your problem based on your area. Um, extracorporeal radiation therapy is not something which happens in US. Uh, it's not a bad technique. And actually, I wherever I presented, um, I talked about the scientific merit of the technique because sometimes when you are presenting work from uh, India, uh, and I have been uh, on both sides, and that, so that's why I kind of uh, see that as when I present the work as a, as a Stanford faculty, uh, the perception of people changes. So that should not be the one which should drive you down. If you are uh, confident on what the research needs to be done, you are you, you are you define your problem based on your area don't don't get guided by what is happening in us i'm sitting in us and i'm telling you that define problems based on your area and that and 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 you can create greater impact because you, your problems is driven by your area so this is where i i you know uh, when i moved this was immediately after i had moved from stanford bioengineering uh, to IIT and then um, what kind of problem I should be initiating because my work at Stanford was on patient specific modeling and that is a problem which was not relevant in the context of um, India. And you know, I can talk about a whole lot why it was not relevant. One of the re main reason it's not relevant is that we don't have that kind of patient data. People go to the doctor only when they are, you know, especially in AIMS, if you know AIMS, People end up in AIMS only at the dire situation. They don't go for regular appointments. So if you don't go for regular appointments, you don't have patient data to do the kind of analysis I was doing at uh, Stanford. So that prompted me to find out what the problem should be at AIMS. And the way I found out what the problem I could work on or I can contribute is just reaching out to many doctors in there, asking them what is the kind of work they do, meeting them. You know, So it's a lot of labor. Uh, go, that goes into that, um, but at the end we had a we we were able to actually contribute uh, to this field. So that's where the bio this problem comes from. Um, so let's kind of move on. Um, what we did, and like see a, a graphical abstract picture says a thousand words, right? So I, I, whatever the exact way of saying it is, but the bottom line is, if you're able to tell your story of your research or your uh, innovation in one picture, it helps. And not only it helps, you, in many papers you write, it is actually required. So graphical, you write 100, 200 words of what you have done, but if you can explain that in picture, they want you to submit a graphical, what is called a graphical abstract. So this is a graphical abstract. And I kind of hopefully the graphical abstract can tell you the pictures, the story. So here is a patient just suffering from a bone cancer. Um, we get this femur's bone from this patient. Not I don't get the bone. The doctors extract the bone, do some for, for their own operation. So this is not for the purpose of research. This is what the doctors do as is. And they clean out the cancerous portion 
And when they clean out the cancerous portion, they clean out a larger area, not just the cancer, they clean out a larger area. So from that larger area, we get samples. So that's where our bone samples, it's a very tiny sample. We cannot, you know, the doctors don't cut out extra for us. That's not an ethical way of doing research. So that's another thing. When you do a human research, it goes through ethical clearance. So we went through ethical clearance before we could get these samples. So now it comes on our end, what we do with the sample, we clean it and we then do kind of the similar techniques, indentation testing I told you about at the, the one I had done for copper. So similar indentation testing. Um, we also look at what is called the chemical structure. It's called spectroscopy method, Raman spectroscopy. So we can get a signature, which can tell you what the bone is made up of. Uh, so we do a bunch of tests on these samples once we get it our end. So this is what the kind of another pictorial view representing what actually happens. So this is a patient uh, in leg and the swollen portion right here is where cancer is. It can be seen here in the x-ray. So the doctors would clean out this section. So that's what is cleaned out section, which is extracted. Um, after they clean it out, they put it under sterilization and the day they sterilize is through radiation. So that's why it is radiation therapy. And after the radiation, so it's extra corporeal because it is extracted from the body, outside the body. And after that, when sterilized, it's put back in. So you have this, if you can see here, there's a broken bone. So they put the bone back in and then apply your nails and screws to hold it in place. But this bone that they had extracted and when it went through all this, lost some structures some mechanical property. So the hooks and all these are usually defined for a healthy bone. So we have to analyze the structure of this bone so that the doctors can make decision on what kind of post-treatment should happen or what kind of therapy should happen for the bone to regain its strength. So normally when you have a plaster, it takes time. The doctor says six months, sorry, six weeks rest or six months rest. And that is based on research for fractured bone. But this is different. This is not just pure fracture. It has gone through cancer. It has gone through radiation. There's a whole lot of changes that have happened. So our work was to characterize this bone using the standard engineering tools that we have. Um, so again, I will kind of go, uh, if you're interested, you can look through it, but here we looked at 15 patient cases and you will see one of the problem of this bone cancer um, is that it, it, you know, bone can cancer is aggressive. It's a growing structure. Children bones are growing, right? So in the teenage years and the preteen and teenage years, when that's when the bone, bone grows the maximum. So bone cancer happens in that aggressive stage of growth. So it affects, you know, it has a very, again, the impact of bone cancer is very high. If you think about, does not affect older people, but rather it affects uh, the primary cancer. It affects younger population. So if you will see, there are people who are 11 years, 14 years, 21 years, 16 years, and I have seen images more, than that, it is really painful and the whole process. So uh, yeah, so that's what, you know, this was a problem defined locally, answer was locally, and we presented it internationally. So you do good work, doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you're doing good work um, and you're confident of that work, you can, you can kind of present it um, in that context, okay. Um, I, I'll skip through this just because I don't want to, uh, you know, take a whole lot of time, but um, kind of, again, if you're interested in any of this, um, you can go to my website and find more information um, or read these papers. And if you want paper, I can send it to Dr. Krishna if somebody's interested and um, if you are not able to access any of these papers. So those two examples, one was applied research, one was medical research, and the third one, very quickly, is some example of innovation. Um, so as I said, research and innovation are kind of connected. And this one is more an example of innovation towards more higher on the innovation side rather than on the pure research side. Um, electro spinning, you might, you know, students from electrical engineering might know about that technique. Uh, electro spinning is a very simple manufacturing technique by which you know you use electrical current so here in this syringe pump um, so you know 3d printing in 3d printing you you melt fibers and print the structure 
that's 3D printing. If I was, if because I work in biofield, not all fibers I can melt. Uh, so the other alternative method to create, you know, new product is through electro spinning. And in electro spinning, I don't need molten, but I need solution form of material. So whatever material I want to print, you know, create fiber from, I have that in a solution form. Uh, there's a large, around uh, 15 kilowatts of potential difference between this needle tip and the collector plate. And that law, strong electrical pull pulls out that fiber which has electrolyte in it. And as it pulls out, it dries the solution and it forms fiber. So that's electro spinning. So this is an in-house build methods, right? So it is not innovation purely, but we developed um, the system. Usually if you go out and try to buy it, it's very expensive. So through an undergraduate project, my students in my lab created that system. And we created multiple versions of that. This is a more larger system. We created $100 version. This is around $5,000. We created $100 versions for uh, more for a teaching module. So we played with creating the system. So it doesn't have to, it's, it, it is a product development which you can do in the lab. For things you find expensive outside, you can create it. You have the knowledge to create that in your lab. Um, so what happens with this system? So since now I have that system set up, I, my students right now are working with cellulose, which is a plant-based fiber for tissue engineering application. So this one is a cellulose acetate fiber. We create these fibers. So if you can see here, not sure, but you can see that white area. So that's where the fiber comes off and gets deposited on the plate. And then this fiber, I can test it. Here is that what the fiber is coming from. I can do my tensile testing. I can do SEM. I can do Raman spectroscopy. Usually the same tools and technique, but I've used it in different kind of very different areas of research, right? So here we are creating fibers for tissue engineering applications. And this again, this is a paper which is not published yet. Uh, this Rohit is, is, is a recent master student from my lab. Um, and this is a paper which is under review, but still available. Um, uh, for, for that, so it's a, a, yeah, so it's an under review paper, but you can get a um, paper as a first look um, and you again, link for this is available on there. So we created something in the lab and why we created it, not necessarily just for creating that equipment, but we wanted it to use in the lab and I didn't have money to buy that expensive thing. So I, I, I created my own and we are engineers, we can create things on, on, on our own if you don't find it. Um, another example of innovation is um, a device which, you know, the, the way I have, um, this is a Fitbit device. Um, I can wear this device, an Apple phone, for example, and it has sensors at the backside and it sits on my artery and it can take measurements uh, for my heart rate and things like that. So similarly, the device that we had created is called tonometry and it, it takes measurement from the same location, the radial artery, but it gives you the whole pulse profile. If you know uh, the standard way of taking uh, the pulse in the Indian medicine, you put your three fingers there and you get your pulse. So that's your waveform. Um, your blood pressure is not the waveform. Your blood pressure are only ideas of two points on that waveform. This device can take that whole pulse. And there are a lot of information and signatures in that pulse, which can tell you about your cardiovascular health. Usual devices, um, which can take that whole pulse is very expensive. So the one, um, again, this was a work I did with Ames. Uh, within Ames physiology department, they had one device, which is $50,000 worth. Um, and then there's a whole lot of other problems which a device had it was difficult to uh, calibrate. It is difficult to translate $50,000 device cannot go into the community and all that. So this was a project for a uh, community-based pulse wave pressurement device. And we created this device. We have patent, V meaning there's again a team uh, from IIT Delhi and Ames. Um, so when you're applying for a patent, you have to have the patent first and then you can publish. So we had to go through the patent first, the patent came first. And then there are two papers which uh, talked about the device development and so device development would be innovation, but the underlying research that went behind we did finite element method, you know, computational solid mechanics kind of analysis to 
find what the device structure would look like. So there was research behind it. Uh, the pattern was for that innovation piece. So yeah, so that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, what examples of research I wanted to give you. And now if you, hopefully you see some of the tools here, uh, indentation, tension, compression, Raman spectroscopy, SEM, microscopy, and all of those tools. So I have the same tool and we apply the same tool across very different areas of things. So you can, whatever tool that you think you have expertise in, you can have an innovative way of using the same tool as well. Um, so finally, some of, so that's one, one tool. I talked kind of throughout the talk, I talked about some of the tools and techniques, graphical abstract, how you form your team, um, how you find the research problem. Those are all tools that you need in you know, defining the problem. Um, more standard tools and, you know, I, I will not take, uh, you, you can find if you Google it, you can find it. So I'll kind of tell you very key points that you can use. So the first thing is, where do I find these research? I'm, I'm interested to create a new device. I'm interested to work in this area. Where do I find information? Google Scholar, it's free. You can search in Google Scholar. Uh, you can find some of the papers. You, sh you can, um, if you take, there are, like LinkedIn and all these social media, you have what is called Research Gate. That's again a LinkedIn version for researchers. You form accounts there, people upload their papers on Research Gate. So even if you don't have access to a journal subscription, you can still get it through directly through that author itself. Um, so you can find articles on Google Scholar. If it is freely available, great. If not, if it is available through your institution, again, great. If not, then contact the authors and authors are more than welcome to share uh, because we are not allowed to put all the papers on, on web because of restriction from the publishers, uh, but they're more than happy to share it one-to-one. -one. So that's where you can find there are other um, institutional database. If you have access to web of science is a standard institutional database. Um, if you have access to that, again, it's great. And it should not be, it should be a shared facility. Um, um, so for example, South Dakota state, has multiple institutions and then they have a shared facility across those institutions. So not each institution is, you know, kind of paying for the same thing. Um, so there are databases like that. Um, the kind of research. So many times you have, <clears throat> you will see a review article. Um, look for a good review article. Uh, if you wanted to understand a new field, if you're interested in one particular information, then you go for primary research. Review article will kind of assemble information from these primary research. And usually a good review article means it is from somebody who has already done enough publication in that primary research that that person has a better idea of where that path is going. Um, so you can find a good review article based on how many times it has cited, who has written the paper, doesn't go just by the institute, but who has work done, who has already worked in that area and that can give you an idea. Um, reading a paper is also a, a tool. When I teach my class, I talk to them about how to read a paper. Um, and this is a comic version of that. Um, uh, PhDs.com or PhD. Um, article. Uh, this was a comic which was going, when I was doing a PhD, uh, another person who was doing a PhD at Stanford, he, he took a career in a different direction. He started writing comics based on the life of a PhD student. And we found it very, you know, very appropriate. Uh, so he has comic strips for everything. So this is how you read a paper. Obviously this is a joke, but the way uh, to read a paper, I tell my students is read the abstract, read the, you know, once if you think it's important, go ahead and read the in introduction and conclusion. And if something you need more information, then you go ahead and read everything inside it. Um, the other thing, you need when you're reading articles, let's say you're working in a field and you have read 10 articles, you want to arrange things. There are reference managers by which you can arrange. They get integrated in your Google Chrome. Um, I use, and these are free. So EndNote is an institutional version. I don't use it. Uh, Zotero is my favorite. It's a free version of reference manager. As you're reading articles, you can store that article within that and so web base is a desktop version. Another one is Mendeley. Again, that is also free desktop version and all. So you can, while you're reading, you can arrange articles um, through that reference manager. 
um, and it is also integrated in the Word. I, I use Mac, but in, even in Mac, you can integrate. So you can see Zotero and M Mendeley, you can add those. Um, uh, you integrate that particular managers within your standard uh, Word document. Um, so, so those are the tools and technique. And then finally, um, what, so research cannot uh, kind of function by itself. Um, you have, the institution has to play a role, the students have to play a role, and um, the faculty have to play a role. Uh, so obviously one way, I've, I've written some of the ways which I found is interesting. Um, in, my, in my teaching, I teach a course, I integrate, uh, and I'll show you what, how I integrate, but I integrate the portion of writing and all that within my teaching. They write, do a project, they submit a paper, a, you know, a report, and they present that report. There are other ways, journal clubs, some of the you know, uh, universities or some of the teams do that. Uh, there are internal publications because it's quicker. You want to still share that information. You can share it within your group and it is still an organization within the group which kind of reviewing it. Um, you have speaker series, which you have right now. Uh, so you kind of get to know other people's work. Um, you highlight teachers. So one way is also encourage this kind of work is highlight them on your website, on, on the institutional website and so on and so forth. So there are many ways which all of us can play a role uh, in that. So the way I have integrated, so I teach a course called Mechanical Behavior of Biomaterials. I have the separate modules in that course. And the one I highlighted is literature survey. So I specifically talk to the students about the thing that I'm talking today. I talk about you know how to cite, how to read and all that. So I have a one section, one, two, three lectures devoted to literature survey. Um, and the students at the end, they do a project which accounts for 20% of their grade. Um, that project means report as well as presentation. Uh, some of the students who are interested to do more, I, I, they, have, they don't take a final, they do that project as a bigger project. So they can account, increase their grade for that project if they're doing um, you know, more work in that area. Um, I, you know, it's important for students also to understand plagiarism because, you know, when you read, um, there, there's a tendency to read and then pass the same information out in exactly the same word, and it might not be just by an understanding. So I clearly, when I'm teaching to the students, I talk about that. Uh, we obviously, every institute has a plagiarism policy, so I explicitly address that as part of my teaching. And this is because I'm teaching a fresh graduate course. Many times there are students coming from outside coming into the institute. So it's the first time they're doing a course like that, as well as senior undergraduates, the fourth year they're going out. So they might decide on a career in research and gives a flavor of what research path will look like. Um, I initiated a BMES, Biomedical Engineering Society student organization, um, which was started first uh, um, at, uh, at uh, my current institute. And again, that gives, now that has a Facebook page, they kind of know what the work is going on. So it gives you a you know, way to express what's going on and share it with outside. Uh, so there, this is the, the BMES Society's uh, Facebook page. Um, then there is, in, this is an institutional facility. There's an open prairie site where students can submit their work. And there's an undergraduate journal in which it gets published and it is shared by the world. So even smaller class projects can be shared if it has a good quality, it goes through an internal review. Um, and kind of, you know, you can look through that people are downloading literature from all over. So it gives the idea of an impact of even a small work that you're doing on a, you know, at an institutional level. Um, and then, you know, the university itself, the College of Engineering can have internal publication to highlight uh, work of the faculty. So that's what my, you know, kind of uh, information is with uh, uh, tools and techniques. So what is, uh, hopefully you, you know, that was clear. I'm, I'm sure most of you it's clear, but it's important to understand what terms mean when we start off discussing more. We talked about why, we talked about some examples, some techniques, and then how you can uh, promote research. So thank you. And I will hopefully- Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Namika Prasad. Uh, the students uh, who all have benefited through this session, especially the faculty also, they benefited, especially me, uh, the process through which a journal can be published, your work can be published in a journal, the process it goes through, 
the people involved and the main important points like graphical presentation is necessary and that's all that's all she did through her presentation through her own example so uh, hope you all understood uh, the thing and uh, now we can take the questions uh, ma'am uh, from the students itself okay yep. give them a chance now the first oh. one so i I'll, I'll kind of stop sharing probably ha huh. thank you thank you ma'am now uh, pritam kumar pritam kumar uh, is unmuted you can ask your question uh, start asking the question pritam kumar are you there pradeep gupta next one is pradeep gupta yes ma'am ma'am i have two question ha yeah, yeah ask the question me an engineer how did you go to research in medical field ma'am a very good uh, question now yeah so the the research in uh, so i so th this is a question which has been each time i talk about my research and uh, this is a co common question so I, from next on i will answer that question first before i present <laughs> uh, so civil engineering i did civil engineering i, I worked in engineers india limited for 3 years st doing structural engineering um so my natural uh, tra transition was to do masters in civil engineering um the focus during my masters was on you know geotechnical materials so I, was, i was doing a whole lot of work on materials i did not like the geotechnical materials but i like the material science or way of doing materials in general i so for my phd i knew i did not want to do geotechnical kind of materials so i was looking for a good project to work on and again that's another example where you have to you have to know what if you are not liking something You cannot stick to it for twenty years of your career, and I knew I could not stick to geotechnical materials for the next twenty years of my, you know, twenty to twenty-five years of my career. So I was looking for a good project for my PhD within MIT itself, and I reached out to other faculty. And MIT is an institute which has a more open culture. So I'm in civil engineering. I can still talk to faculty in mechanical materials. It's a more kind of a flat culture. So. Um, i at that time indentation and nano mechanics was growing up so i reached out to a faculty working in that field um he offered me a work in traditional materials which was nickel tungsten alloy or biomaterials which was i was scared to do so for my phd i didn't do bio because i thought i was anyway transitioning making a big leap from civil to materials world so i continued with more traditional materials more standard way of analyzing um and i worked on you know functional my phd thesis was on functionally graded Some material issues. nickel tungsten in that lab many students were working in bio field so it's a multi standard mechanical materials research group a lot of people were doing uh, bio materials bio field and i looked at red blood cells getting you know stretched the same way i would test my nickel tungsten alloy and i saw the impact of that work my nickel tungsten alloy was getting less uh, uh, coverage in news but the you know the malaria was getting more coverage so not only coverage but i found those work very interesting and as i transitioned to my postdoc i i worked in an area which was still structural materials in the sense that i was looking at stent graft which is a structure inside the blood vessels so it was still traditional materials but now i was analyzing structures inside the body and that's how i kind of moved gradually from civil to this the common theme being solid mechanics structural mechanics and uh, traditional methods so yeah so you, hope you understood the uh, your question answer to your question how ma'am moved from uh, engineering to medical science and yes, these all are connected uh, students you should understand these all are connected you are observe she was observing something she was interested in something and then that interest she took over and then she uh, switched over to so, so everything is flexible engineering medical science science is all connected hope you understood 
Yes, Now the next question. Next question comes from ma'am. Prince Kumar. Prince Kumar was the uh, person who was asking, na? Prince, are you there? Ma'am, hi, Bhuvan. Question also. Prince, yes. unmuted. Yeah, I'll take over to you. Uh, first, uh, we have come. Uh, Prince, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Ha. Okay. Fine. Ask your question. मैम अगर हमारे पास कुछ इनोवेटिव प्रोजेक्ट है और उसको अगर जनरल में पब्लिश करना चाहते हैं तो वो कैसे होगा मीन पेटेंट अगर उसको करवाना है तो वो इनोवेटिव प्रोजेक्ट डिपेंड करता है आप जैसे जर्नल्स भी बहुत तरह के होते हैं देर आर जर्नल्स जो यू नो इट्स नॉट इट इज दे कॉल जर्नल्स बट वो पैसा लेके पब्लिश करते हैं एंड हैड मेनी एग्जांपल्स ऑफ दैट द रीच आउट सेइंग कि ये पब्लिश हो जाएगा दोज आर नॉट द राइट जर्नल्स बट मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टैंडर्ड जर्नल्स यू कैन सबमिट एंड सो द वे टू पब्लिश इज कि जिस फील्ड में है जिस जिस टॉपिक पे आप कर रहे हैं उस टॉपिक में आप ऑब्वियसली कुछ पेपर पढ़े होंगे तो वो पेपर कहाँ पब्लिश हो रहा है वहां से स्टार्ट करिए कि वो कहा पब्लिश हो रहा है वो जो आर्टिकल को रेफर किया वो कहा पब्लिश हो रहा है उससे आपको आइडिया लगेगा कि ये वाला फील्ड कौन कौन सा स्टैंडर्ड जर्नल है इस फील्ड के पब्लिश जो करते हैं वो कोई ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कंपनी या यूनिवर्सिटी की तरफ से होता है नहीं ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कंपनी की तरफ से नहीं होता वो लोग पब्लिशिंग इंडस्ट्री अलग होता है उसको कहते हैं पियर रिव्यूड पेपर मतलब की जैसे जो भी पेपर पब्लिश हुआ अगर हम पेपर सबमिट करते हैं तो वो एल्जाइवर एंड दीज आर स्टैंडर्ड काइंड ऑफ पब्लिशिंग हाउसेज और जो कि जिसके एडिटर फैकल्टी होते हैं तो आपका जो वर्क होगा मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम यूरोपियन जर्नल्स विल बी बेटर क्योंकि जो कनेक्शन बिटवीन यूरोप एंड इंडिया इज बेटर देन कनेक्ट द रिसर्च द काइंड ऑफ रिसर्च आप कर रहे होंगे बिकॉज वहां भी लॉर्ड ऑफ यूरोप द रीजन आई सेट कि यूरोप में गवर्नमेंट फंडेड रिसर्च है यूएस में द रिसर्च इज गवर्नमेंट फंडेड बट स्टिल इंडस्ट्री इंटरेस्ट बहुत आता है So, अगर आपका सोसाइटल इम्पैक्ट उस तरह से तो यू फाइंड द राइट जर्नल मेनी टाइम्स उसके पब्लिशर हो सकता है यूरोपियन हो या ऑस्ट्रेलिया हो या यूके हो या फिर यू नो यूएस भी हो सकता है लेकिन ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नहीं होता है वो पेपर um, जैसे मैकेनिकल uh, आप आप एक पेपर ही जिस अपने में से एग्जाम्पल में हम ले रहे हैं मैकेनिकल बिहेवियर ऑफ बायो मटीरियल्स वो एक जर्नल है आप उसके वेबसाइट पे जाइएगा वो उन, उस वेबसाइट पे इंफॉर्मेशन होगा कि किस फील्ड में ये पब्लिश करते हैं ऑथर इंफॉर्मेशन होता है क्या चाहिए उनको वो सब इंफॉर्मेशन उनके फील्ड में होता है तो पहले तो थ्री जर्नल्स को आइडेंटिफाई करिए फिर उस जर्नल के पेज पे जाके देखिए कि क्या चीज उनको चाहिए और उस बेसिस पे आप, आप लिख सकते हैं शंभु शंभु कुमार आ फैकल्टी आ फैकल्टी शंभु कुमार अनम्यूट ये शंभु सर हाँ गुड मॉर्निंग मैम मैम मैं बोल रहा था फंक्स बोन स्ट्रक्चर पे आप काम कर रही है तो कोई फंक्शनली ग्रेडेड पे आप काम किए हैं क्या मैम जो कुछ पेपर मिलेगा हाँ फंक्शनली ग्रेडेड मटेरियल मेरा पीएचडी वर्क फंक्शनली ग्रेडेड था वो प्लास्टिकली ग्रेडियंट था निकल टंगस्टन जो लॉय था वो ग्रेन स्ट्रक्चर चेंज हो रहा था तो ग्रेन स्ट्रक्चर रेनफोर्स्ट करके हाँ तो लेकिन फंक्शनली ग्रेडेड मटेरियल जैसे बोन इज अ फंक्शनली ग्रेड मटीरियल अभी जो नया वर्क कर रहे हैं वो प्लांट इंस्पायर्ड स्ट्रक्चर प्लांट में भी पोरस ग्रेडियंट है फंक्शनल पोरोसिटी ग्रेडियंट है तो आप पेपर मेरा पेपर में तो मेरे पीएचडी पेपर में है फंक्शनल प्लास्टिकली ग्रेडेड मटेरियल्स ओके मैम शंभू सर आपको आंसर मिल गया होगा और आप फ्यूचर में मैडम ही इज आल्सो अ फैकल्टी इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डू इज ही इज परसुइंग हिज पीएचडी फ्रॉम आईआईटी पटना एंड वेरी क्या बोले बहुत रिसर्च में बहुत इंटरेस्ट है इसलिए मैम आपका आगे इनको जरूरत पड़ेगी तो शंभु सर यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट मैम डायरेक्टली थ्रू मेल एंड आस्क योर फर्दर क्वेश्चन थैंक यू वेरी मच नाउ 
Dr. Anamika, he is also an automobile engineering in a faculty in our institute. So okay. keep on. Uh, Ashutosh ji, ask who's here. Uh, uh, actually, uh, you are working in biomedical field. Uh, so actually, I am also in the process to develop some uh, uh, nanolithic and I am working in general area. So, uh, uh, in, uh, related to biomedical science, uh, suppose knee joint or ankle joint or wrist. So these are some uh, yes, you know, moving joints. So there is a chance of breathing back. So uh, you have done the analysis of stress analysis, stress analysis. So uh, did you do any analysis on creep or something related to that? Uh, because breathing back is something which is as far as a serious problem when it comes to moving joint and cyclic loading. So do you have uh, any work in uh, uh, data or? I, I unfortunately I did not hear a whole lot. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Ashutosh ji, aapki awaaz thik se nahi aa rahi thi. To thik se awaaz nahi aa rahi. Ashutosh ji, aap hain kya? I can repeat. I can I can repeat. Hello. Can you hear me? Ha. Awaaz thik se connect nahi kar pa rahi hai, ma'am. Aur ham log bhi nahi connect kar pa rahe hain. Ah. So can you hear me now? It's very lower side mein. Okay, okay, I I I will contact ma'am from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, fine. Another question: Is it from any student? Who? Bablu Kumar. Bablu Kumar. Uh, unmuted. कर दीजिए. Bablu Kumar, you have been unmuted. Ask your question from ma'am. Are you there? No. So there will, uh, Doctor Anamika, as there are so many questions in this field, and uh, beautifully you presented it beautifully. The, everybody was engrossed in it, including myself. And uh, thank you very much from coming for coming here. We'll ask you to come again soon so that you may answer all questions for faculty and. uh the students too they were interested uh now uh i'll uh hand over the mic to uh, jaya bharti ma'am professor jaya bharti are you there professor jaya bharti yeah uh, she'll give a thanksgiving uh, formally from ngp patna 13 side jaya bharti handing handing over the mic to you thank you anuradha ma'am good morning to all uh, on the behalf of new government polytechnic patna tera main ab thanksgiving karna chahti hu new government polytechnic patna ki taraf se sabse pehle main hamare principal sir dr chandshekar singh sir ko thanks karna chahti hu jinhone hame bahut hi acha platform aur opportunity di jiske wajah se hum log kuch seekhe और स्टूडेंट्स को कुछ सिखा सके मैं अपना अपने स्पीकर्स को स्पीकर डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद मैम को थैंक्स कहना चाहती हूँ स्पेशल थैंक्स उन्हें कहना चाहती हूँ जिन्होंने अपना वैल्यूबल समय निकाल कर हमें अपने नॉलेज से लाभान्वित किया उन्होंने टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स की बात की जिससे हम जिसको हम लोग अपने लाइफ में इम्प्लीमेंट कर सकते हैं मैं हमारे फैकल्टी मेंबर्स को थैंक्स कहना चाहती हूँ जिन्होंने एक्सपर्ट से कोऑर्डिनेट करके एक सक्सेसफुल वेबिनार कराने की कोशिश की हमारे टेक्निकल स्टाफ्स को थैंक्स करना चाहती हूँ जिन्होंने हम सारे प्रॉब्लम्स को हैंडल किया और वेबिनार को स्मूथ फंक्शनिंग करने की कोशिश की है हमारे सारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स को थैंक्स कहना चाहती हूँ जिन्हें जिन्होंने एक्टिव पार्टिसिपेट करके इस वेबिनार को सक्सेसफुल बनाया मैं आशा करती हूँ कि सारे बच्चे जो भी यहाँ पे सीखे हैं वो अपने लाइफ में इम्प्लीमेंट करेंगे कैसे इनोवेटिव आइडियाज की तरफ बढ़ना है ये हम लोगों ने आज सीखा थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सर अब मैं हमारे प्रिंसिपल सर से आग्रह करती हूँ कि वो दो सब प्रोत्साहन के तौर पर बोले हमारे बच्चों को थैंक यू जया जी थैंक यू डॉक्टर अनुराधा ऑल फैकल्टी मेंबर एंड माय गेस्ट स्पीकर 
Dr. Anamika Prasad ji. Uh, your valuable suggestion and tips to our students is really amazing. And hopefully all the students and faculty members will uh, do the presentation, report writing, because all are researcher, you know, uh, they are technical people and they, their aim is to do something innovative so that as per the need of our country, they can make our country the Atmanirbhar. The today's call is Atmanirbhar country. Our students are all in it. बिहार के जितने पॉलिटेक्निक हैं उन सब से उन सब में सबसे अब्बल नंबर है हमारे स्टूडेंट्स का जो भारत सरकार और बिहार सरकार के सहयोग से चलने वाले स्टूडेंट प्रोजेक्ट परियोजना में काफी बढ़चढ़ के हिस्सा लिए हैं एंड होपफुली प्रोफेसर संभु हैज बीन इंटरेस्टेड येस्टरडे नाइट इटसेल्फ टू गिव द रिपोर्ट टू सबमिट द रिपोर्ट टू द काउंसिल और आज का प्रेजेंटेशन सभी छात्रों से गाइड से जो भी उनके फैकल्टी गाइड्स है उनको हेल्प करेगा रिपोर्ट राइटिंग में डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद स्पेशल पेन लेके और देर रात तक जग के हमारे लिए प्रेजेंटेशन हमारे बच्चों के लिए स्टूडेंट्स और फैकल्टी मेंबर्स के लिए प्रेजेंटेशन किया इसलिए स्पेशल थैंक्स टू हर एंड थैंक्स टू आवर स्टूडेंट्स फॉर द पेशेंस हियरिंग ब्यूटिफुली listening the speech and participating in question answer session also hamare students ko jab bhi beech mein zarurat padegi they may contact to our coordinator dr anuradha krishna and they can take uh, guidance or suggestions from our esteemed speaker dr anamika prasad wo bihar se judi hai aur patna ke rehne wali hai isliye हमें लगता है कि हमारे स्टूडेंट्स को गाइड करेंगी और बेसिकली सी इज ऑल्सो ए रिसर्च स्कॉलर टीचर्स तो उन्हें भी अच्छा लगेगा अगर हमारे स्टूडेंट्स हम लोगों से और डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद से ऊंचे मुकाम पर पहुंच जाए इसी शुभकामना के साथ आप सभी को धन्यवाद ओवर द प्लेटफॉर्म टू डॉक्टर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर और जैसा सर ने कहा कि स्पेशल थैंक्स हमारे स्पीकर को जो जिन्होंने रात तक जाग करके हमें सारा चीज वैल्यूबल चीज दिया ये सात बात सही है और यही देखिए साइंस की खूबसूरती है कि हम एक आदमी जो कैलिफोर्निया में बैठा हुआ है हम पटना में बैठे हुए हैं दूसरे लोग दूसरे जगह बैठे हुए हैं और सभी कनेक्टेड है ये खूबसूरती है साइंस की खूबसूरती है रिसर्च की और आगे हम ये इसके बच्चों को ये प्रोत्साहन देते हुए कहेंगे कि इसी तरह साइंस में अपना कुछ नया करते हुए दुनिया को आगे बढ़ाएं और आत्मनिर्भर भी हो जैसा हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर बोल रहे हैं और स्पेशली नाउ आई लाइक टू एंड डॉक्टर अनामिका डू यू वांट टू से एज द चैट से एवरीबडी बेनिफिटेड एंड देवर हैप्पी थ्रू इट सो डू यू वॉन्ट टू से समथिंग फॉर आस नो थैंक यू इट वॉज गुड क्वेश्चन आर ऑलवेज वेलकम uh for faculty please contact me directly if you have anything we want to discuss uh, we are all colleagues here so i'll be happy to you know, have that discussion for students uh, just because uh, you know you can direct your questions through dr krishna um, yeah. and uh, yeah so it is it is great to come uh, you know as i said i am from patna so it it will be my pleasure to help in any way and uh, given all the story of migrant workers and all it is very important you know even if you are far off away it still you still feel the pain and uh, so it is important for the students and i you know it's not like i am talking like a leader or anything like that just on a personal level that if you have the confidence um, you know at one time the industry in bihar was growing um, and for whatever reason I, the most insulting thing that i i heard as a faculty in iit delhi was when somebody would say this is from outside india so it will be good uh and i i know as sitting in iit delhi as a top institute i felt insulting i did not feel something as a selling point that why should i be the one and i tried buying things in india i did not find anything starting from material polishing to all you know the basic equipment they were all broken the quality of uh, product was not great um 
which was coming from india and it does not mean we do not have the capability i think just we don't make an effort because we somehow buy imported thing and I, so anyway so that's my <laughs> take on that that we have the capability to do that you guys have the capability to do that thank you ma'am sahi kaha aapne ki aisa hame bahut kharab lagta hai ki koi kehta hai ki aap lagte nahi hai ki bihar se ho aap lagte nahi ho ki india se ho bilkul hi demoralizing hai और भारत और बिहार स्पेशली हम लोग जिस स्टेट से हैं और मैडम भी उसी स्टेट से हैं सो हम गौरवान्वित महसूस करते हैं कि मैडम उस स्टेट से हैं और हमें आकर के अपना वैल्यूबल टाइम दिया अब मैं इस सेशन को एंड करूंगी और फिर से अनुराधा जी स्लोगन के साथ कि हमारे सभी स्टूडेंट्स कहें कि हम भी डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद की कॉपी बिल्कुल 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 सारे स्टूडेंट्स कहें कि मैं भी डॉक्टर अनामिका प्रसाद की तरह बनूंगा और बिहार की धरती से ये कर सकते हैं वेबिनार सीरीज का मोटो भी यही है कि हमारे स्टूडेंट जान सके कि हम भी बन सकते हैं डॉक्टर अनामिका ही नहीं बन सकती है हम भी बन सकते हैं उनसे अच्छे बन सकते हैं जरूरी है कि उनके पद चिन्हों पर चला कर सर ये चैट्स में आ रहा है की बढ़ूंगा आगे इसलिए ये जरूर कंटिन्यूड रहेगा और थैंक यू थैंक्स अलॉट थैंक्स अलॉट मैम थैंक यू